Amen. You, you, you know, one of the things that uh, I hope everybody had a great uh, week, and I hope you had a great weekend, and we're looking forward for people to have a, a great week. Uh, just, we just pray for God to, to continue to be with us and guide us. I like, I like what my mom says, that, you know, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. You know, I keep saying a lot of cases we're about the fruits of the Spirit, right? The fruits of the Spirit found in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, and when we talk about the fruits of the Spirit, we're talking about the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, characteristics of the Holy Spirit in us. But the fruits of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law and he wants all of us to line up with the characteristic of the holy spirit meaning letting the holy spirit manifest in you all of things have no law but we know that hate is a law against hate we even in this country have a hate law hate crime law we 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 got this thing about the visions. And you you know, some of the ministries, the reason I'm trying to say ministries, I'm talking about we as a church, I, I understand about of organizations that, that teach us hate. I understand as people that teach us hate for political affiliations. <laughs> I understand these are the things that you man has created, but we in the church. Those of you who call, some of you, some of you call, but you call, but you call as a racist. And I, I'm racist, black, racist, white, racist, and all these are social constructs of man. It has no place in the body of Christ. I don't, you don't go against God's will, but yet people do it. And you know it's not right, but you do it. And you don't understand that that is not the will of God. And this we're talking about is not just the uh, social construct in this country. And these social constructs in this country was created for the sole purpose of oppressing and putting somebody else at a disadvantage or putting somebody else at advantage of the people. All people are made in the image of God and you, you can't take that away. That's not going to be something that you can wish away. And then you, you, you're causing, you're causing ministry. I'm talking ministry because I ain't got time to talk about what different political parties do. I'm not, and we ain't got time to talk about what uh, governments do. We're talking about the fact is that you are ministers of God in Christ Jesus, and you don't teach your people to love one another, that you don't understand that there's people killing one another and you don't even teach them to love one another. You have responsibility. You don't have responsibility to allow people to come into your church. And that's one of the things I hate the fact is that we love to teach people to come into church and have division and isms and schisms. We want to sit there and reinforce social behavior that are negative and think that it's right. You, believers, you the supposed to be man or woman of God. You, when you endorse it, and then you teach your own people to hate. You say, I don't teach nobody to hate. Yes, you do. Because you don't say nothing about it. If you don't address bad behavior, if you don't address the fruits of, 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 of corruption, you know, and see, this, this subject today is the fact is that God does not look at the outward appearance. John, you know, in Matthew 12, 33, it says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or either make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt, for a tree is known by its fruit. We, as believers, we, as members of the body of Christ, are supposed to be the light of the world. If we sit there and don't 
or ignore when people don't show their light. You, if you sit there and allow people to hate because of political affiliation, we got such a divide in this country, all stated and right, rooted in, in, in isms. And the ministries and the church, you have allowed these things to be crept into the church. How many people sit there from the last election and say, God, put somebody in office, therefore it's a right, and didn't understand that people on January the 6th were sitting there saying somebody stole the election because you ministers also, you know, accepted that junk. It said God chose that man. And I'm talking, about, I don't care what I'm talking about. I'm talking, what, what I'm talking about the fact is that that's what was said. You said it, you prophesied it. You got involved in politics and you in politics and you allow the body of Christ, those members that belong to you, you allow the body of Christ to be led by politics. By you sitting there saying what God did, and therefore you got those people riled up along. They they affiliate themselves with people of hate. And it went all the way to the Capitol and stormed the nation, this country that we said is one nation under God being a leader in this world. <clears throat> and we allowed. That to get to the point where the light of the world, a Christian nation, I know we got people that they got issues about uh, uh, saying this is a Christian nation because they may be not Christian. That's irrelevant to us. We are what we are. For those of us who say when we as a Christian nation, Showing that we're supposed to be the light of the world. We're showing that we don't hate somebody because of their different affiliations of, of belief. We don't. If you as a minister, you know, ministries allow people to do that. You're wrong. See, we're supposed to show the love of Christ. We're supposed to preach the gospel. We're supposed to let our light so shine that people sit there and say, I want that. I want the love of Christ in my life. I want the Holy Spirit in my life. I want to be a place where I glorify God. But when we show the ugliness of division and schisms and isms, then those people are saying, I don't want it because it has no salt. It has no light. It's showing doctors anytime you ministers, you supposed to teach people not to allow their hate to shine because it doesn't shine it covers light but you do it you do it you let it happen you 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 want the social constructs you allow people can you some of you worried about the fact that they leave your church let me tell you something you are a representative for christ you're not a representative for the world ministers Men of God, children of God, we're supposed to be light and salt, not hate. We're not supposed to sit there and put nationalism. If we're going to show nationalism, we should show kingdomism, the kingdom of God. And what is the kingdom of God? Whether well, it's the love of God, a relationship with God. That's what we're supposed to do. I, you don't have an excuse. You, there is no excuse to hate man. And yet you are supposed to teach that people come to the body of Christ to know how to love one another. So when you put down in your scriptures, I just want to know ministers, because you know, whether you like it or not, you will answer for what you teach. And I'm some, well, some of us are worried about teaching uh, little technicalities of differences opposed to the fact is of love one another. Look at this <laughs> and, and Mark starting at chapter 8 
verse 34. And when he called the people unto him with his disciples, he also, he said unto them, whosoever will come after me and ministers understand is not after you, but after Jesus. Jesus said in 14, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one come to the Father but by me. Ministers, you're supposed to have people follow Jesus. You're supposed to teach people to follow Jesus because I guarantee you when people follow you, they follow some people to hell because you don't even know what you're doing. You've pointed to Jesus. Jesus always glorified God. We sit there supposed to glorify God through Jesus Christ, not through ministry. And then every time you allow that to happen, you put your own self in jeopardy. He said, whosoever will come after me, Jesus Christ, following Jesus, let him deny himself. So you know if he said let him deny himself, you don't have whiteism, blackism, racism. You don't have nationalism. You don't have polyphilicationism. You don't have tribalism. You don't have none of those isms because he said let him deny himself. And anytime we get to the point where we got so much pride that we can hate somebody else. That means anytime you hate somebody just for the mere political affiliation, color of their skin, nationality, you hate somebody, you're not denying yourself. He said, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. When you hate somebody because they've got the different political party. When you hate somebody because they got different color of skin, when you hate somebody because they come from a different country or, or, or have a different faith, your job is to show my faith is superior because of my faith is superior because of glorifying God, not because of me. We're talking about Almighty God. That's who we worship. That's who we serve. <laughs> And, and that is sufficient for people to hear that he loves you. He loves me. He loves the world. But we are sitting there getting wrapped up, tied up, tangled up into differences and social constructs of man and not understanding we're supposed to deny ourselves. Look at the scripture I'm talking about. Those who join in and come in at a certain point in time. He said, let him deny himself. Anytime you hate somebody, you're not denying yourself. Anytime you don't care about somebody else and saying, well, they, they, they got to pick up their own bootstrap, you help them pick up their bootstrap because you are a child of God. If you're not a child of God, I understand why you do it. And that's what most people need to understand. And ministry need to be filled point to people that a tree is known by its fruit. Let him deny himself. Are you denying yourself? Because if you're hating other people because they're different, you're not denying yourself. You go ahead and go do the, read the book yourself. Go talk to some, see, go, go, go talk to a racist. And he'll tell you, oh, no, that, 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 you, no, 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 you, that don't that mean nothing. You, you're supposed to hate other people. Listen to them. Instead of you listening to God, listen to them and you'll find out what's better. Obey God, obey man. Let him deny himself. Do you do that? Do it. Take up his cross. Meaning he denied himself. He's allowed himself to be put on that cross and do what? Follow Jesus Christ, not follow ministry, not follow the color of people's skin, not follow nationality, not following the world system, not following the God of this world, but we talk about the creator of almighty God, heaven, earth, the universe. He said, for whosoever will save his life, once again, that lines up with denying himself, Whoso will save his life, his way of thinking, his way of doing things, 
his way or my highway. That's what people want. <laughs> Whoso will save his life, the life separated from God, opposed to the life connected to God. He said, but whosoever shall lose his life for the sake of the gospel, the same shall save it. But those who want to believe keep their life. See, that's the problem. You ministers, you got to do it. Let the Holy Spirit be the teacher. You keep pushing and pointing people toward Christ, toward the word of God, not toward your own the preference of, 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 of isms that exist, tribalism. We let that creep into our political party to a point that we're a, a, a part of this tribe and whether that tribe is lying or doing right or wrong, I'm part of that tribe. We got people to sit there that when we talk about the CRT, we got people knowing that our, our history is so bad and behavior outside of the will of God that we want to be able to say, don't teach that history because I'm ashamed of that history. We don't want to teach the stuff that's a shame. We want to teach the stuff that shows we did all the right things. Well, that's not how things work, is it? Let people know we have repented from those things. We're not perfect. Not, not one person listening to this video, not me who's speaking. None of us perfect. We all have done bad things. And we're to one another. And we have to realize we have to, we got to put ourselves on that cross and follow Jesus, denying ourselves and being transformed and renewing our minds. He said, when I read 35, for whosoever will save his life shall lose him, whosoever shall lose his life for my sake in the gospel, what? The good news. The same shall save it. This is a piece I want to get to in, in ministers, Christians themselves, the body of Christ. For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? What profits a man to sit there and try to hold on to a social construct that divides and try to marginalize or put somebody else in disadvantage just for the mere color of their skin or party political affiliation or uh, where they came from? What profit you to gain the whole world and lose your soul? What what? What profit, what do you give? The verse, I like this verse, so 7, 7, 37, or what shall a man give in exchange for a soul? What, why would you want to lead your child, teach your child to give in exchange his soul? Ministers, why would you let people teach their children to exchange their soul for the mere presence of an outward appearance of color to teach people to sit there and think it's okay to say, well, these people are inferior. This people in the political party are inferior. And, and I, that's, what, that's what it comes out to. I want you to, I want you to ask your pastor to examine the things of this world and ask, is it okay to hate it? You know what the answer is going to be? No. Yeah, but what about the people that got different political affiliation? Well, you know, about those people, they, they, they're weird or whatever, right? Should I hate them though? They're going to tell you no. That's what they should. Those who don't. That that's where you get, that's what they gonna have to answer to God for. And minister, you will answer. Those of you that are called children, I mean, minister, the fivefold gift ministry, but you're really not teaching things of God. The Bible says a tree is known by its fruit. We need to teach people to check one another's fruit. Yeah, you're gonna find fault in me, you're gonna find fault in yourself. It's not about the fact that we, that's why he said that you got to, we have to die to self. 
But if we sit there and perpetuate it, we sit there and try to allow it to fester, people are never going to move forward because you're teaching them to, 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 to hate. Because you're saying it's okay to hate differences. And I know your parents told you. I know your mentor told you. But who do you follow? Who do we teach people to follow? You know, I, I, one of the things about me, I, I remember growing up in the first minute of the conference I went to, I said we should teach people everything we know, and the person said we teach everything we know, then who's going to be in charge? And that's where the problem arise, arise, isn't it? Isn't that where the problem is? When we don't want to teach, we don't teach Christ because we want people to be able to follow a person and not Christ. We want people to follow a denomination and not Christ. We want people to follow a political party and not Christ. We want people to follow the color of somebody's skin and not Christ. We want to follow the things that cause division opposed to the fact of bringing the oneness that comes through the love of Jesus Christ, the love of the Holy Spirit, the love of the Father. Division. And it, 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 it's one thing we definitely got to get past religion uh, of hate and racism, because in the, in the Old Testament, you saw so many different nationalism where people fought wars over and over again because if one was one tribe and one was another tribe. The social construct of, of racism really came in the 1800s. But it was justified during the 1600s when the man started slaving and slaving another man and saying, well, I don't like the outward appearance, so therefore I think I should go ahead and treat them any way I want to. Opposed to saying, let us show them the love of Christ. No, we, we just, man, just, just ministers, just recognize we're jacked up. We're all jacked up people, so therefore we need to preach the gospel, the good news, that even if you're jacked up, don't look right, don't talk right, God loves you. That's what we're supposed to be able to do, right? So what shall a man give in a shame for a soul? Or whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me in of my words, meaning the words that said, go preach the gospel. No, we were, no, no, pastor, I was supposed to hate somebody. I was to show the anger. I was to show the anger that keeps them and snatch them from the fire going to hell. Well, how could racism fit that category? How does being ugly fit that category? How does not bearing the fruits of the spirit fit that category? It doesn't. You can sit there all day long, go there and find somebody that agree with you, that it's okay to hate, it's okay to show being ugly. <laughs> You can find somebody all day long to sit there and say, you don't have to bear the fruits of the Spirit. And knowing that God told you you got to bear the fruits of the Spirit. But you're going to sit there and say, I'm going to sit there, I'm going to go with my buddy, I'm going to go to the buddy, go to the club, and we're going to sit there and drink and get drunk, and, and we're going to sit there and say, you know what I mean, because these people are all jacked up, you know, we don't have to love them, we don't have to bear the fruits of the Spirit. You got to listen to yourself. You, see, you, you go to a game and, and, and say, man, I you in agreement with me, man. We don't have to love those people on the other side of the field. We don't need to love those fans. Matter of fact, let's go kill them when we get a chance. All for exchanging your soul. Why? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my word in this adulterous, look at these, what do we call? This is what Christ called the world. And those of us who want to save our lives to the world, he called it an adulterous and, adulterous and sinful generation. That is what Christ viewed the world. And when we go into the flesh, we go into an adulterous and sinful generation. Of him shall also the Son of Man be ashamed. We're teaching and leading our congregation. We're teaching and leading our family members to, to, to be ashamed. I mean, for God to be ashamed, but Christ to be ashamed of them, when he comes his glory of his father with the holy angels, that because we thought it was okay to do something the opposite way he teach us to do, call us to do, huh? I'll come off this for a second. If that would, that's what we must do, we, is that worth exchanging your soul because somebody is different and you want to teach them other, that way? Because somebody, I mean, we, I, 
we, it, there is no justification for hate. There's no justification for bearing corrupt fruit. A tree is known by its fruit. And when you sit there and bear corrupt fruit, what corrupt fruit I'm talking about? Well, the works of the flesh. Well, you want to hate somebody. You want to sit there and kill somebody. When you sit there and not show love, not show joy, not show peace, not showing faith, not you don't show goodness, you don't show these about what do I you don't show gentleness, you don't show goodness. When you don't even show those characteristics, but when you show roughness and rudeness, what are you trying to say? And what fruit do you think you're bearing? I don't, it doesn't matter about what they do or what they think. You don't give people, you, you don't give, it's like somebody say, well, you trying to tell people it's okay. No, you, you, are you, are you not understanding that you don't tell a grown person what to do? Do you not understand that when a child is a child, then you raise that child to operate and know to do the right things and behave the right way? Because when they grow up and they do those things that are selfish and stealing, and cheating and hating, that there's a system out there that put and incarcerate people for doing bad behavior. So when you sit there, what, what justification do you have to bear corrupt fruit? The Bible says a tree is known by its fruits. Matthews 12, 33, listen to it, because we're the scriptures we're talking about today is, but God looks at the spirit of man. He <laughs> does not look at our what appearance of man. But we're teaching, we're reacting based on our attitude toward a person, that we're focused on the outward appearance instead of the spirit. We're not trying to get their spirit to be connected to God. We're trying to get their spirit to be connected to I don't know what you try to do when you show corrupt fruit. When you show that you're not good. When you show you're not gentle. When you show you don't have love of Christ. What, 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 what fruit are you trying to bear? What, what are you trying to do? How do you feel that your shame in somebody is going to... Look what he said. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.